The objective will include brief introduction to various structures of prokaryotes and also uh, we'll talk about their functions. And in this part, we will talk about structures external to the cell wall only. Uh, we will discuss uh, in a little more detail about the glycocalyx. This is an overall uh, structure a depiction of a, a bacterium where you could see that the cell has different structures. Some are, um, um, if we consider cell membrane as the most internal uh, lining, the structures that are external to the cell lining uh, include cell wall, uh, capsule, then these hair-like structures, what we call fimbri or pili, and then there's a long thread, it's called a flagellum. Uh, in this presentation, we would focus only on glycocalyx, and some part would be covered on the flagella. But before we talk about various structures, let's just go quickly through uh, the functions of these structures. Plasma membrane, as you know, it provides a selective barrier. It is used for nutrient transport and also used in respiration and photosynthesis. Gas vacuole, there are certain bacteria that live in water, in seas, in ponds, and those that, that need light, they have evolved with these gas vacuoles, which keep them floating on a level that is required for the nutrition to be provided there. Next structure is ribosomes. These ribosomes are protein synthesis factories. Then inclusion bodies, uh, they're also found in bacteria. These are uh, storage of carbon, phosphate, and other substances that bacteria acquire from the environment and stores them and uses them on demand or on need. Nucleoid is the area where DNA is located. It's a genetic information. There's a space called periplasmic space. This space is basically external to the cell membrane. And there's a lot of um, enzymatic activity going on in this region. And it contains hydrolytic enzymes and binding proteins for nutrient processing and uptake. Next structure is cell wall. Its function um, is that because it, it is rigid uh, chemically, it provides stability to the shape of the organism and also protection from osmotic stress. So if a bacterium uh, sits in, a, in an environment where osmotic pressure is more or less than the bacterial cell, uh, cell wall protects it from getting damaged. Capsule and slime provides resistance to phagocytosis. Bacteria, when invade the body, cause the disease, they need to get uh, out of the reach of the cells of the immune system. So capsule and slime, basically capsule, uh, helps these bacteria evade the immune system, go away from the immune system. So these cells cannot handle or cannot uh, phagocytose or ingest or eat these bacteria and kill them. Pimprii and pili, or pili, uh, these are projections on uh, the cells. They are used for attachment of this bacterium to surfaces and also uh, transferring their genetic material, the DNA, from one bacterium to the other. This structure, what we call flagella, is used for locomotion. So bacteria, if it has to move from one place to the other, it uses its flagella. It, it beats it um, by turning it either clockwise or anti-clockwise, and then it uh, moves from one place to the other. Um, for seeking nutrients. Endospore is a special structure of, uh, of the, the bacterium. It is formed under um, environmental conditions that are not very friendly for the bacterial growth. And this is a survival strategy by some bacteria. Not all of them are able to uh, make these endospores. As I mentioned, that if we take um, cell wall, which is the, the middle layer here, as our landmark uh, for 
studying structures that are external to the cell wall and then there are structures that are internal to the cell wall, we see that there is a capsule and then we see these fimbri or what we call hair-like you know, projections. And there are other structures also that include um, the capsule, as I mentioned, uh, flagella, or which, is a, which is a long thread, not shown here in this, this uh, picture. Um, flagella comes in two forms. Uh, most bacteria have flagella, but spirochetes uh, flagella is called axial filament. The purpose of the flagella, as I mentioned, is to uh, make movement possible. Fimbriae and pili, these are these teeny, fimbriae are these ones, hair-like projections, and pili uh, could be one or could be two or could be many, could be uh, up to ten. And these are used for DNA transfer from one bacterium to the other. Now, let's talk about the glycocalyx. Um, it is viscous, inconsistency, and gelatinous, gel-like. It surrounds the cell. So it is secreted by the cell and adheres to the outer um, part of the, the cell or the bacterium. It is composition-wise, it has polysaccharides and also proteins. So it's a combination of both uh, polysaccharides and um, proteins, what we call uh, polypeptides. And the composition of these polysaccharides and polypeptides vary from one organism to the other. And this variation, I will tell you, uh, could be used for identification of bacterium. This glycocalyx is called a capsule when it is organized and is tightly attached, firmly attached to the cell. We call that glycocalyx as a capsule. And it has a role in the virulence. Virulence is the ability of the organism to cause damage. Uh, when it infects the body. And this, as I mentioned, the, the, the capsule uh, could also be used as identification of the bacterium. And if we take the capsule out of the cells and make a vaccine and inject into an animal, an animal would form antibodies against that capsule, um, which is polysaccharide and polypeptide. These are not normally present in the, the body, I mean in a human body or animal body that the bacteria infect. So body recognizes that as a foreign substance and induces immune response, making antibodies. So this capsule could be used as a vaccine. If the glycocalyx does not adhere to the bacterium firmly and is not very organized, we simply call it a slime. So this is a bacterium here. You could see this is a negative stained slide that shows some of the bacteria. Uh, there's a bacterium, these, these uh, blue or black cells here, they depict the organisms, and then there is a clear uh, halo around the cell. This halo basically is the capsule. So if you wanna see the capsule uh, after staining, what we call negative staining. It is one of the techniques that we mentioned earlier. So a capsule could be visualized by negative staining. Uh, this is a, a colony, what we see on the nutrient agar, if we grow the, this slime secreting or capsule, capsular bacteria in the, the lab, uh, the colonies look like these, you know, see um, kind of a, a glistening or, and mucoid in, in, in morphology, in shape and in appearance. These are some of the examples of uh, not all organisms uh, possess this capsule, not all of them. Some do, and these are one. Uh, Three examples that I, I selected. Bacillus anthracis, calls, uh, it causes anthrax in animals, a very deadly disease. And it also can infect humans. Then there is another uh, bacterium, what we call Streptococcus pneumoniae, which causes pneumonia um, in humans. Klebsiella is another organism, not shown here. Uh, it's a rod shaped gram negative bacteria or uh, bacterium that causes various. Um, secondary, mostly secondary infections in humans. Glycocalyx can also be used as a biofilm by the bacterium. So because it is a secretion, so and then it's viscous in consistency, gel-like, so it would adhere to the surface. The bacterium, if it chooses to stay in one place uh, there, where there's a lot of nutrition for the bacterium, so bacteria does not want to move. So it would secrete that glycocalyx 
as biofilm and then it would adhere to the surface. Other than that, they also, uh, when it is making biofilm, it also secretes extracellular polymeric substances and they protect the cells. You know, the cells make a colony and all the cells are then protected by this biofilm. And it is very difficult to remove that bacterium if that uh, makes a biofilm in the body after the infection. It's very difficult to treat such infections. So this glycocalyx can help the bacteria to attach to various surfaces for survival. This picture here shows a, a biofilm on the teeth. And people who don't brush their teeth very well, they um, end up with this biofilm and then the bacteria colonizes uh, their teeth and uh, damage the teeth and makes those cavities and other tooth infections. This is a diagrammatic representation of a, a cell that secretes biofilm. So the cells attach to the surface, then it secretes these EPS, and then this EPS helps the bacteria colonize the surface, and the, and the bacteria, they um, multiply in, in that uh, area, making big colonies, and then they can discommit from uh, these colonies, they can detach from these colonies, and then uh, can go from this place to another place. And then again, this cycle could be started by, you know, the first is attachment, then there's a development, this uh, biofilm and colony making, and then, so this is the way uh, these cells survive from one place to the other. Let's talk a little bit about the flagella, although we would not cover the structure here, but a little bit on the classification because flagella could be used for classifying uh, the organisms. So flagellum, as I mentioned, is a long thread like here. This is all flagellum. And when it beats, when it moves, the bacteria moves with it. On the basis of this flagellum thread-like structure, we can classify bacteria. If a bacterium does not have any flagella, we call it atrichus. Trich Trike, this means hair. So A mean not. So there is no hair-like structure. There is no flagellum. A trichus. Then if a bacterium possesses uh, many of these uh, flagella, then we call it as a peritrichus. And these flagella are, are distributed around the cell. They're called peri, mean around. So peritrichus, distributed over the entire cell. On the basis of this uh, flagella, uh, we can call bacteria as polar also. Because if they're on the ends, like the poles, we call them uh, monotrichus. If there's one hair-like structure, we call it monotrichus. It could be amphitrichus. That means amphi mean both, two. So if the structure is present on both sides, we call it amphitrichus. And this structure could hair-like structure could be one or could be a tuft. Uh, like bunch of them. So they are called lophotrichus. Could be on one side, could be on, on the other side as well. So in summary, uh, the structures that are outside the cell wall include glycocalyx, which we called, uh, if it is firmly attached to the cell, we call it a capsule. If it is not firmly attached, we call it a slime. And then the second is a hair-like hair structure, what we call flagella, used for movement by the bacterium. The same flagella, when it is in, present in the spirochetes, we call it uh, axial filament. Again, it is used for motility or mobility of the organs from one place to the other. And then there are uh, hair-like, small hair-like structures all around the cell. We call that fimbriae. Fimbriae, we will study in a, in a later lecture. They also are uh, used for attachment of the bacterium to surfaces, much like slime or uh, capsule. Pili are special structures, not very many, sometimes only one, sometimes two. They could be present up to 10, or even, I mean, around 10. And their function is basically to transfer DNA from one organism to the other. 